Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Drawer of the Week. Or I should say Drawers of the Week in plural. Because this week I'm going to show you four drawers. Why, you ask? That's because these four drawers have one thing in common. They're my own material from my breeding. Hey everyone, and thanks for watching. Collections in museums are often called research collections. That's because museums use their collections for research purposes. And not because they look so pretty and we want to collect them for fun. All the material here is inserted in a database where we can find accurate information about their distribution, their flight time, and is shared with other scientists across the world. I donate everything to science. When my butterflies and moths die a natural death, I don't throw them away, but I donate them to science. In some cases I even kill them for it, although this is generally rare that I do this, because I try to let them live out their natural lifespan. So that means that my breeding supports the ongoing research about the butterflies and moths that we love so much. Let's start with drawer number one, the Asian species. Now when I open this up I see one mistake. Can you see it? There's one species in here that's not really Asian. It's the Ophodiptera Helena that I had from Australia. But actually, uh, the region in Australia is sometimes called the Australasian fauna region. And since I had no other box to put it in, I sorted it with the Asian specimens. Because the Australian fauna still mostly resembles the Asian fauna. Or the Australasian fauna region which also includes places like Papua New Guinea and New Zealand. Let's take a closer look at what's in here. Here we see Apicopaya henesi. Apicopaya henesi is a species from Asia. It's from its own unique family, the Apicopaeidae, called the false swallow-tailed moth. Last year, I bred a lot of specimens of these. Somebody sent me eggs from Japan, and it turns out they were really easy to breed. Do you remember the videos about them? Well, I donated some of these specimens to the museum. Today they are here in my Asian drawer. Hey, this one looks familiar as well. It's the Arctocurula, an Arabid moth. It's somehow related to our underwings in Europe, like Catocala. True a rabbit moth, a rebine. Here a pupa that never hatched. Aha! What we have here is the Rodinia verrecunda, one species of squeaking silk moth. Relatively easy to breed, although the caterpillars grow slow, and below it we have the Rodinia fugax from the same genus. Now, some of these specimens don't have an excellent condition, but that's because I kept some of them alive. And I use the specimens that look good after they die to repurpose them for the museum. Here we have again two Rodinia species. And this is the, again the Rodinia fugax. And this is the Rodinia verrecunda. Just like here you have verrecunda and fugax. Somewhat subtle differences between these species. Here we have the Bramea tankrai. I had eggs from the Far East last year. Makes for a beautiful and easy breeding. Ophodiptera helena, that one's familiar, isn't it? 
and some Trabala specimens from Asia. I like to breed Trabala a lot. And then we have Tias Juno, an awesome species of Palearctic underwing moth that's very easy to raise on birch tree, but also other things like oak, I think even willow, etc. I have a care sheet about them on my website as well. This should cover the first trower, my own breeding from Asia. That was that. So it's time to take a look in the second drawer. Here we have material from Africa. So this is from my African breeding. Let's take a close look here. What do we have? These two specimens here don't look so good. Their quality is really horrible. They've been damaged badly. That's because I did not kill them. But when they died a natural death, I still mounted them for research purposes. You see, a research collection is not about collecting the prettiest looking specimens, it's about research. And even specimens like this can still be used for DNA ex extraction or dissection. Now it's better to have good looking specimens, so you can have, you can capture the whole morphology, but when it's not possible, this is a good alternative. And here we see two beautiful Nudarelia dione. Actually, I tried to breed these pieces, but they didn't pair, strangely enough, even though I tried my best. Everyone told me it was an easy species, but still I failed. I hope someday I will find eggs on pupa of them again, so I can try again, because it's an awesome looking moth. Here we have the Palastica mesoleuca from Togo. I raised some of them from egg to adult. And one Loba bunea acetis. Well, I forgot to make a video of this one on my YouTube channel, sadly, so this piece was missing from my channel. I'm unprofessional, I know. Aha. Do you remember this? I filmed this moth, I think, maybe one or two years ago. Uh, Loba bunea felusa christi, or nowadays just Loba bunea christi. I think it's his own species. A beautiful Saturnid moth from the African region with beautiful bright red uh, eye spots. Really stunning and amazing. And here we have the rainbow moths that I filmed, the Eugromia folletti. Somebody sent me eggs from Ghana, Africa, of these moths, and as you can see, they're not very professionally mounted because uh, I pinned these before I learned how to mount butterflies and moths. In fact, if some of these look awkward, it's because I'm still practicing my pinning ability on these specimens, okay? So, this is my first attempt. Here we see a beautiful pair of Cerancia apollina. Sadly, the species is unbreedable in captivity because of its food plant that is unavailable in Europe. But still, it's fun to see them hatch from their cocoons. Next, I will try to take a look at the neotropical species. That means the moths that I was breeding from South America. Let's have a closer look, shall we? Now, these outer mirrors look like they're in terrible shape, and I agree. But as I said before, they're still useful to science. What species they are is still a little bit of a mystery, because they're very hard to ID. And there's 14 similar looking species. However, I think based on the location uh, where they were found in Ecuador, they are the Automerus nipelti. Although it's very hard to distinguish them from other species like Automerus lara. Automerus boops, Automerus aegeus, etc, etc. Maybe I still have to do a DNA test on them later. My breeding of these giants Automerus was quite successful. You can see all the videos on my channel. Raised them on bramble. Um, typically these big Automerus species are not very easy to breed for beginners. And even I still struggle with them, so I was lucky to be successful. Here we see the Automerus beltizaruma. Or some believe Zaruma is now its own species, so that should be Automerus Zaruma. Again, it's a beautiful moth that came from Ecuador. Sadly, I had a lot of cocoons, but I failed to pair them. So, I tried whatever I could, but they wouldn't like, pair for me. So sadly, I'd never captured the full life cycle, which I would have loved to do. And finally, here we have some Pseudautomerus. Now it's time to take a look at my American specimens. 
Ha. America is not a fauna region, it's the Palearctic. But conveniently, all my Palearctic species so far are American, so I guess it shows. The Schema Hawardi is a very big tiger moth from America. And it's somewhat rarish because not many people know where to find and collect them. It's also one of the most spectacular and rare species of tiger moth from America. I was lucky enough to raise many of them from eggs. In fact, somebody sent me 17 small caterpillars and all of them made it to adults. Now, I didn't preserve all the adults, but all the good looking ones and these are still part of my breeding. If you are still a long-term subscriber of mine, you probably remember the old videos of the Dischema Hawardi where I was filming them, where they were flying around, or even when I was raising the caterpillars. This was really one of my spectacular breedings, one of the best I ever did. I really love tiger moths like this. Sadly, it was impossible to pair them in captivity for some reason. They were really easy to grow from caterpillar to adult, but the adult moth seems very hard or impossible to pair. Finally, you have some Automeris patagoniensis. Oops, I did a bad job at pinning that one. Finally, these two moths are the only two in this collection that are not from my own breeding. But they were sent to me from two people in the Netherlands. You see, I also collect invasive species in the Netherlands. It may be hard to believe, but this big silk moth was found in the Netherlands, in Groningen. It's a Copaxa uh, lavendera from Mexico. And somehow this cocoon was transported to the Netherlands and found in someone's bathroom. This is a Lerina incarnata, a tiger moth from Arizona and New Mexico, an actual Mexico. But somebody in a village called Schage found it in his backyard. Now, how a moth from Arizona ended up in the Netherlands, nobody knows. But I collect things like this because I want to research invasive species and if there's anything harmful, then I will try to stop them or at least report it to the relevant authorities. However, I think that these two species have zero chance of becoming harmful or invasive. So I still collected them for fun and just for, you know, recording biological data. So this was Drawer or actually Drawers of the Week with Bart Coppens. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next week. Hello everyone and thank you for watching this week's episode of Drawer of the Week. My name is Bart Coppens and I work with butterflies and moths. Both dead ones and live ones. Because I breed them in captivity. I study them, I film them, I photograph them, I research them. And I volunteer in a museum collection where I'm a conservator of the butterflies and moths. Now Drawer of the Week is my weekly series where I show you one drawer with interesting specimens from a museum and give you some interesting facts about them. If you like it, like my video, subscribe to my channel and consider joining my crowdfunding platform Patreon. Because only with your help, my mission to educate the whole world about insects can be fulfilled. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next episode of this weekly series. Hello everyone, and thank you for watching my Drawer of the Week mini-series. I would like to take a moment to say thanks to the Natural History Museum of Rotterdam, or in Dutch, Het Natuurhistorisch Museum van Rotterdam. All the insect videos I film, I film in the scientific collection of the Rotterdam Natural History Museum, where I work as a honorary junior conservator. Thanks for watching and till next time.